Hey there everyone out in YouTube land, it's Josh from Trying Tech and today we are doing a review on the Bebon Cool Saitaki STK 7007F1. Okay, and so the reason why I wanted to note that is because there are quite a few variants of this controller on uh, eBay, Amazon, and even uh, Chinese um tech sites but this one is made by bebon cool uh also known as the saitaki 7007x1 this is the f1 variant um so what we're going to do is do a brief review uh we're going to go over what uh, comes with the controller build quality and design as well as a little bit of gaming performance uh, both with uh, native Bluetooth controllers and emulators as well as um, using uh, some touch emulation using the app. We're going to show you a little bit of the gaming performance with this controller. First off, I just want to preface by saying um, for how much I paid for this thing, I've been having just a ton of fun with this controller um, and make sure to check in the links in the description below. Uh, I'll have some Amazon affiliate links. If you want to help out the channel, please, please, please order through those links and you'll help me out. I'll get a very small percentage of it and I just want to say I would not um, be endorsing any Amazon affiliate links if I did not uh, believe in this product myself, use this product, and I, I could fully endorse it. But we'll talk more about that uh, in the summary. But first off, let's talk about what comes in the box. So first off, this is the box, nothing too fancy. Okay, I'm not going to do an unboxing, but that's it. All right, and um, that's the packaging it comes in. You got the controller itself, all right. Uh, you stretch it out, it says Bebon Cool. Uh, this is a telescopic type controller. All right. Um, I'll go a little bit more over some of the features of this uh, once I go over the design. All right. It comes with the controller itself. Comes with a little bit of documentation here. Talks about using the app, how to pair um, both in HID mode, which is native Bluetooth controller, uh, basically X input. All right, how to pair in uh, app mode and how to pair on iOS. Now, I'm gonna preface this by saying uh, for this video, I'm only gonna show how to pair in the app Android mode and the uh, native HID mode, okay? X input, basically. Um, I'm not going to talk about iOS, not because I don't have, I myself don't have an iPhone, but um, I really don't use the iPhone. Now, my wife, she does have an iPhone, and I will probably revisit that later, just so people can get a look at it. But for the time being, we're just going to talk about Android and uh, Android performance and native Bluetooth performance, okay? Uh, one other thing is, so it also comes with a small micro USB uh, charging cable, no actual charging brick, all right? Uh, just a little disclaimer here about this charging cable. I don't believe this is the actual charging cable it comes with, but the cable that it comes with is roughly this length, this size, okay? It's a micro USB charging cable. Nothing special about it, all right? Sorry I don't have the actual controller cable that came with it. Uh, my little buggers got into my stuff when this came in and I don't know what they did with the original cable, but it's a micro USB cable. Um, all right, nothing remarkable about it, but just a little disclaimer, your cable may slightly vary, okay? All right, now that we've got that out of the way, we've got that out of the way, okay? Like I said, not too much comes with the controller. Um, 
But the controller itself, uh, talking about the design overall, um, it feels very well built. When you have it together like this, it feels pretty sturdy. All right. Um, it's a telescopic controller, which means it stretches out. This one stretches out a lot further than some of the other ones like the iPega or the, um, oh gosh, the Fly Digi uh, B2 or whatever it's called. There's a Fly Digi one. They make one that's sort of like this, but it's more rounded. Okay, uh, it is not necessarily um, much better. Okay, I'm gonna focus in a little bit. Let me see if I can focus in a little bit. All right, usually this focuses automatically. Okay, there we go. So now you can see the uh, controller a little bit better. All right, so like I said, telescopic, it stretches out. Um, I'll show you my phone, which is the OnePlus 7T Pro 5G McLaren edition that uh, it actually fits in this with a case, but we'll go over some of the buttons here. All right, so it has dual uh, analog sticks. It does have R3 and L3 when you push in. It has a D-pad. It's a separated D-pad. Not ideal, but you get used to it, okay? Uh, the Android button, that's for pairing an Android app mode iOS button that's for pairing with iOS uh, with Apple products all right then you have a view edit button and four LEDs that show uh, what type of mode you have or the bottom one that shows if it's charging okay um, you have an X Y A B sort of like a uh, Xbox controller however if you look at the layout this actually resembles more like a switch okay has a slightly better d-pad than a switch and it has L1 L2 and the all-important trigger buttons okay so it's so when you stretch it out there's a lot of flex here but I'm going to show you putting my phone in there and it barely fits with the case. Okay, putting my phone in there, there's not as much flex. So it's definitely a lot better. Uh, that popped out there. I didn't have it snapped in all the way. All right, snap it in. Okay. Oh, I think I accidentally pressed the iOS button here. All right, so. Okay, let's shut that off. All right, so that turns it off or turns it on if you want to pair it in uh, native Bluetooth mode, which is also known as HID mode. You're gonna hold X. Oh, let's make sure I turn on my Bluetooth. That's always important. All right. You're gonna hold X and you're gonna press the Android button and it's gonna pair in HID mode, okay? So, for some reason it doesn't really work with my phone, but you can like scroll through the menu with HID mode. So you can control the interface on Android with HID mode, okay? Um, so we're gonna try some emulators and then we're gonna try some actual native gaming. Uh, with native Bluetooth support, and then I'll show you how to do the app mode, all right? Which is a little bit tricky. And so first off, let's try Redream Emulator. Uh, first off, if you have not checked out this emulator, I highly recommend it. Uh, it is a great emulator, even uh, not really high-spec phones. Games play wonderfully on it, and then if you have a high-spec phone, you can play games at 1440p which looks amazing. All right, so let's let's do a fighting game. All right, so we'll start out with Soul Calibur. Okay, so in HID mode. Oh, let's turn that down. That's really loud. Okay. I don't know why this is saying new. 
Unless it opened up some new modes. So, I actually didn't have to map anything on this. Um, the only thing I did map on this emulator was the, the L, or R3 button so that I could go into the menu. This is really fun to do through the camera. Okay, all right. So, as you see, pretty good. And I'm able to navigate through the menu itself with the controller. So let's try a game that requires maybe a little bit more inputs. Okay, so we're gonna try Marvel versus Capcom 2. There we go. Okay. Let's see. I want like a Ryu type character. Okay, we got Ryu. Wolverine. And Hayato. Okay. This is going to be fun because I'm standing up trying to play this. Overall, the controller feels pretty comfortable, you know, when you're not standing and trying to film. All right, let's see if I can do a fireball. There we go. Hurricane kick. It's a little bit hard to uh, pull off the dragon punch. There we go. Okay. Yeah, I'm getting my rear end handed to me. Ah, oh, yes, I pulled a super move. Or she did, I don't know. Yeah, I'm getting my rear end handed to me. Okay, so. You see, overall, works pretty good. All right, we're gonna exit. Um, this works in PPSP, everything just works, no need for any special mapping. All right, so this is Tactics Ogre, I don't know why it's saying it's running slow. So that just works. And again, I can map like the home button to go to the menu if I want to, which is cool. All right, so that's emulators. We're gonna try a native Bluetooth controller game. Unkilled, first person shooter. It's okay, it's decent. A lot of ads, a lot of videos that they push but it's free, what do you want? It's decent enough for what it is for a zombie shooter. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, whatever. Now for native Bluetooth controllers, especially first person shooters, 
did have to map the trigger buttons, but otherwise everything's just recognized. All right, using trigger buttons, everything works. Aiming works. Okay. So, that works really nice. Yep. Yes. Okay. So, what about for games that don't support native Bluetooth controllers? What then? Well, this controller's got you covered with that too. And, all right, there we go. It's kind of focusing now. Uh, you're going to use an app called the Shooting Plus V3. It's a free app found in the App Store. Okay, so it says device disconnected. So what we're actually gonna do is we're gonna go in here, all right, and we're gonna actually, first off, we're gonna change this. Here's the thing, you have to forget this device every time. It's the only downside of this. And then you have to pair a new device and pair it again if you're gonna use the app mode, okay? Otherwise, it won't recognize it, even if it's showing that it's connected. And this app is kind of hit or miss, okay? Okay. I don't know why it's doing that. All right. So, we're gonna open the app again. See, that's what I said, like this is kind of hit or miss. Because right now it's connected, but it's saying it's not. So we're gonna forget, forget device, pair new device. We're in Android mode. But sometimes it will, it will show up. So it's kind of iffy. See now it's showing connected. So if it does that and you're having issues with showing that it's connected, then go ahead and do what I did. Go to forget device while you still have it in Android mode and go through the pairing process again. But it's kind of a pain in the butt. Like, it's just annoying. It should just work, and it doesn't. Um, so first off, you see here in the app, there's some presets. We have Fortnite, which I don't know why they have a setting for Fortnite, because Fortnite natively supports Bluetooth controllers. However, some of these games don't, like Call of Duty multiplayer. They have a Call of Duty Battle Royale, which I don't understand why there's two different settings. Um, honestly, if you're going to use one, use the Call of Duty multiplayer and you'd click download preset. I'm not going to do that right now because I've already downloaded the preset and I've actually tweaked it. So, and I'll show you how to do that in the app. The other thing that's annoying is I would really like to be able to just open it in here, but you can't. All right. So we're going to put this little floating, display the floating ball key and we're going to close up. Okay. So now what it's going to do is down here in the bottom, there's this little overlay. And now we're gonna open Call of Duty. So, <laughs> I've been actually avoiding playing this game really long, and I actually just did it just to test out this function. Cause I've tested it out on one other game and I'll show you how to map your own custom controls if there's not a preset, but to be honest, like, I'm actually having a lot of fun playing this game, especially with the controller. No, I don't want to do that. Annoying. Okay. 
Okay, so it's definitely recognizing my button pushes because now it's showing up. But if you're in game and you want to tweak it, you just bring this up. Now I've already got mine configured, but if I wanted to tweak something, I'd press the button and then I would just move it where I want it to go and then I'd click save. All right, but I've already got my setup the way I want it. Okay, but that you would press this little ball. Okay. Oh, I think I'm actually in the round. Okay, so there's my aim. Oh yeah, yep. And I'm not even really good at this game. But it's a it's crazy how well I play when I'm not standing and when I'm using this controller like it's almost not fair. Like I've gotten minor assist. Yes, I helped. No one here. Still killed him. Now when I'm not standing and trying to do this while filming, like, dude, I'll get like headshots out the wazoo. I got like back-to-back -back, um, MVPs because I killed so many people. You know, you may think it's cheating. I don't know. If they haven't banned it, Ooh, I need to go back and get that gun. There was a gun over here somewhere. I'm gonna start knifing people. Where you at? Ooh, I want you. Oh shit. Ran out of ammo. Pardon my language. Not that I get monetized anyways, but I'll definitely be, uh, any chance of demonet or monetization will be gone. Did I mention how hard this is when you're standing, trying to do it while filming? Still killing. Still killing people. If I get an MVP for this, I'm going to freaking laugh so hard. I don't want that. Gotcha. Okay. Dude, but this is like seriously. It's just like console, man. Got a score streak. Oh, he got me. <laughs> We're still ahead. Mm, excuse me. So gassy. Where are you? I know you're over here somewhere. Son of a. Not doing as good as I usually do. Like I said, it's a lot harder when you're standing and filming. You probably can't even see what I'm doing here. All right.
Got him. No. Damn. Okay, so we're probably gonna stop there. Well, we're gonna stop there and we'll come back and I'll give you my final thoughts. But that's enough gameplay on that to kind of show you what it's like. Um, Cause this match is gonna take a while. So I'll come right back after and we'll resume. All right, be back. Back and um, so I finished up that match and we did win. I know I wasn't doing the best earlier, but I started doing a lot better once I just sat down, just focused on playing. Anyways, uh, not only did I win, I got MVP again. So yeah, this thing definitely works and it definitely works well, okay? Um, so now I'm gonna show you, so what if we're wanting to play a game that doesn't support Bluetooth controllers natively and is not already has a preset. So we're gonna go here and let's see here. I'm actually go back. All right, so here's the main menu, shows this connected, shows presets, and we are going to put add preset, all right? And then we're gonna go here and we're gonna scroll for the app that we wanna add, and we're gonna add a preset. And the game that we're actually gonna add a preset to is Honkai Impact 3rd. Okay. Okay, so there it shows up now. All right. So let's see. Let's uh, let's click preset does not exist. All right, so it does not have a preset. All right. So what we're going to do here, in this case, because we don't have a preset already existing, what we're going to do is we're going to start the game, which is already started. All right, and my little bubble's up here. By the way, this game here is free to play. Um, it does have in-app purchases, but I highly recommend it. It is an absolute blast to play. It's like Bayonetta with anime and waifus. Waifu Bayonetta. So um, it's really fun. It's a super good action game. Uh, like I said, it plays a lot like Bayonetta, but you actually, uh, you know, have different different uh, fighters that you can choose between. So you have like three different fighters. They're called Valkyries. Okay, so let's exit out of this. Let's exit out of that. Okay. Okay. Like I got it, you're wanting to give me free stuff, but. Okay, so right now it's actually showing this, but we're gonna make it to where it doesn't show the buttons. But first, let's go into attack. Uh, we're not gonna do that now. Attack. Story, story, story. No. Okay, fine. All right, that was actually really quick. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna pick this person to be my fighter. Okay, so I'm gonna edit this while we're doing this.
Okay. I want to skip. Yeah, skip. Okay. Blah, 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 blah. Okay. Come on. All right. So we're going to bring this up now. And so typically this is... That was my R2. Where's my R2? Okay. So we're going to move the R2 over here and the L2 over here. So we're going to kind of set it up the way it's set up on the um, PC version, which also, if you haven't tried that game, the PC version of this game, it's like a better graphics version and you can bring your save data from over there. Okay. Uh, I want to change this to Y. So I press Y and I drag this, drag and drop. It's that easy. Um, I want A to go over here. X is gonna go over here for my guns. Um, let's make R3. Where the frick is my R3? We're gonna make that the pause button. And then see if I wanna change how it touches. I can. We're gonna keep it as ordinary touch. I don't know why it moved my X over there. Got X. And I'm gonna bring my B over there, which should be fine. Okay. Everything else, we'll, we'll move this one a little bit. Other than that, looks like everything's set up. So once you're good, you're gonna save it. And then see, because I created a preset, save the preset solution to the device now, bind to the game simultaneously, Honkai Impact 3rd. We're gonna press okay. All right, so. All right, so my A is dodge. Which if you dodge at the right time, Okay, so now I just switched my fighter with uh, left trigger because that's what I binded it to. Kind of really similar to the PC layout. Okay. All right, so I want to switch back to her because she's strong against them. So I just press my right trigger and boom. And then it's giving me a prompt to switch my fighter and I press left trigger and boom, I switch right back. Okay. Want to do the special move, I press Y, because that's what I mapped. Okay, there's my little uh, guest player. So it plays almost like the PC version that has the native controls input, but this game here does not natively support Bluetooth controller. But it is so much better with the native Bluetooth controller, or with the controller support. And this is done through touchpad emulation, and this is all done without root, so it's pretty cool. Okay, so piece of cake, all right? So this is a good thing to have when you don't have native. Close, okay. All right, so we're gonna go back We can go back, back. All right, and I don't know if there's a way to 
edit it so there's like you can make it where it just moves around like a cursor which if you could that would be awesome because then you could play even games that don't natively support touchscreen on like an Android TV device maybe like an Nvidia Shield or something okay but that's it for the video um, so overall here's what I like one uh, it's very comfortable to hold in the hands uh, fits even large phones uh, like the OnePlus 7T Pro, even with the case on. Um, it does feel a little flimsy when there's no phone in it, but once you put in a phone, it feels overall sturdy. Like, this isn't going anywhere. Um, it can be a little bit cumbersome, uh, but it's better than like having your phone on top of the Xbox controller. I will say Xbox One controller for native Bluetooth games is the superior way to go. Uh, so it's cool to be able to configure apps that don't natively support Bluetooth. What isn't cool is it just is not as intuitive as I feel it should be. The app does not always detect the controller. Sometimes I have to uh, tell it to forget, then repair, even after telling it forget once. Um, however, on the plus side, it has L3, R3 buttons. HID support and native Bluetooth controller support is just vastly superior to this than anything except an Xbox One controller. But overall it feels good, it feels good in the hands, and it's just a joy to play with. I've been having a blast with emulators uh, playing on this, and then like I said, even Call of Duty Mobile, which I never thought I would get into that game, uh, it's become really fun with this game. Anyways, like I said, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up and make sure to click subscribe, ding the bell for notifications if you want to see more of this content. And then if you want to get this controller, I'll have an affiliate link down below. Please, please, please support the channel. I get a small, small percentage, but it helps me a lot as uh, it does support the channel and um, allows me to bring more content to you like this. And thanks for watching. This is Josh from Try and Tech. Chuck and Deuces. I'm out.